Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to the results from typing assignment number nine. I'm excited about this one. Uh, this assignment was about those strangers in our midst, people we see, but we don't know what their story is. Well, this was your opportunity to make up a story, an imaginary tale about real people you see in your life, in your day-to-day -day life. And I'm excited about the uh, uh, results we had and excited to share it with you, so stay tuned. I was almost wanting to name this episode The Lives of Strangers, which kind of reminds me of that uh, foreign film about the uh, East German Stasi and their extensive dossiers that they collected on uh, their their citizens and, of course, the typewriter <laughs> in that particular film, the Groma Calibri, I believe. Anyways, the lives of strangers. We don't know what those lives are, what happens in strangers' lives around us, but we can kind of make it up here. I wanted to also comment that I was supposed to get this video out a little bit sooner than I did today. You guys have heard of Spring Fever? Well, I have a thing called autumn fever. The weather right now is absolutely beautiful and idyllic in New Mexico. And I wanted to go out on a scooter ride today instead of working on this project. So I forgive me for being a little late with this. But here, here we are with the slideshow of the results. Hope you enjoy it.
So John Monroe's piece was titled The Dragon Lady, and he wrote it on a 1951 Smith Corona Sterling. And I really love the way he wrote this on letterhead stationery from the Pacific Hotel in Chiga Chigasaki, Japan. And his story tells in first person perspective of a woman's life who had first honeymooned here in this hotel way back in 1966. And then the tale he weaves, that John weaves, talks about how she had a marriage and two children and her husband, a, a wealthy real estate person who got assigned overseas to the United States and eventually his business fails and he kind of comes back to Japan in disgrace. But in the meantime, she has saved her money and she started her own local real estate office and now uh, later in life she's the successful one her husband sort of just hangs around the office and she is known as the dragon lady because of the way she admonishes her now idle husband and uh, the story ends with her as a widow living out her last days in the same hotel this is a wonderful sweet epic story arc. I love these kinds of stories where, um, in this case, he takes as a starting point just the letterhead stationery and how that is transformed into this entire sweeping life of a person. It, how her adult life, married life, begins in the hotel and then her last days ends at the same hotel. That was a wonderful story, John. Well done. Andrew Nichols' piece was titled Running Man, and he wrote it on a Gossen Tippa. And this is a very cool story. This is the kind of a story that if you've ever lived or, or been on vacation along a, an ocean, a coastal beach area, you see people running, older people, and you want to know what's their story. Well, this is about the daily runner along the beach, and he's evidently an ex-boxer just from the way... He does his little boxing maneuvers as he's running, and in this case, uh, Andrew sees him uh, take a spill, but he gets up, and he still is boxing in his, as he's running. He's an older fellow, about 65, and this inspires Andrew to write about what his life could have been, and in his story, Andrew spins the tale of how this guy was an up-and-coming boxer and the great fight that he lost and how it sort of ended his what could have been a promising career and how he never really got over that loss and every day he gets up even as an old guy he gets up and goes out running as a way of kind of maybe fighting the inner demons recreating uh the fight within him and maybe trying to just relive it and hash it out over and over again but there's a real melancholy sense of what could have been about life's regrets and I can sense that I'm 60 years old as all of us get older we kind of uh, think about what could have been maybe we could have done something better or differently but you know one thing that Andrew's story reminds me of is that uh, you can look back uh, as an older person on your youth and you have both your youth and your life experience as a memory but if you're young you only have your youth you don't yet have the perspective of age. So there is a real wealth in, in those memories of, uh, from, from experienced, mature people. And what a great story you wrote, Andrew. Thank you. Kevin Anderson's piece was untitled, and it's written on an Olympia SG-1. And it's, I love this story. Sam is the character. He's a dedicated churchgoer. He goes to a Catholic church. This is a keen and sweet study of this fella's habitual Sunday mass attendance. And he describes, Kevin describes all his little quirks and mannerisms. I like the observations uh, that you make about uh, how the fella always gets there early so he can get the same spot, the same seat in the same row. And I like your observations about the stingy spending habits uh, of the church on heating and barely heating and cooling the building and how the house lights come up just before mass starts. I like the fact that Sam kind of leaves quickly right after the service, doesn't want to talk much to anyone. Uh, and it reminds me so much 
of people I've seen in that same situation. This is a great observational study and I can imagine you seeing this fellow wondering what his life was like. This, this was really sweet and a fun piece. Thank you very much. Alex uh, wrote his piece titled Ulysses. This was a really clever piece. I enjoy this. So he sees this walker he encounters several times, an odd fella, kind of dressed oddly. Turns out to be a modern day version of Ulysses. And they stop to talk. I really like the way you wrote the dialogue. Uh, it was written very conversational and I could just see it. It was cinematic. I could see them talking. You know what's interesting about this was there's this undercurrent, this underwriting theme in this piece about change. That's what the, the piece is about. And it probably, of course, gets back to the myth of Ulysses, Ulysses himself. But I like the two goose photographs that the fellow shows him. And they're captioned, stable and unstable. Wow. That's pretty deep. And I like the geology t-shirt. And you know, there's this connection between stable and unstable in geology. I mean, it got sort of, you know, the earthquake thing, which is very poignant right now because of the tragedy in Mexico. But, you know, these connections in this story, that's really deep. I like where you say, they don't say what really happened, why things change. He's talking about this Ulysses characters, talking about geologists can describe geological change, but they don't tell you why they change, which is a deeper question of why things happen, not just what happens. I like the thought that we're often confronted with the unknown more than we realize. The unknown is really a part of our life and we have to, have to get used to it. And I really like this paradox that you phrase where knowing that you don't know, which, um, <laughs> which kind of reminds me of the former defense secretary of the United States, uh, Mr. Donald Rumsfeld, who back in the 2003 Iraq war was quoted as giving some line in a press conference about all these, there's unknowns you know and unknowns you don't know. And that, that, that very clever. It was a very clever piece, Alex. I really loved it. And I loved this, the underlying theme in there. It, it was very cool. Well done. David Cornelius piece was titled Mr. Shuffles and it was written on a 1976 Erica 34. And the title of the piece is a nickname given to an older gentleman in his apartment building. And we're assuming that he is a Vietnam veteran and a former helicopter pilot. And David threads a very interesting uh, hypothetical story of the guy's background and all the danger and life-threatening challenges that he faced while in country in Vietnam. I like what David says, his slow gait belies not just the scars his body carries, but also the heavier burden of immense loss and emotion from having been there in that time. That is so well written, David. It shows so much sensitivity to those veterans. And it reminds me again that you can't judge an older person by appearances because everyone's body wears out over time. And again, as I said earlier, when you're young, you only know the things of youth, but when you're old, you know both the things of young, youth and maturity. You know life. And you painted us a portrait so poignantly of this Mr. Shuffles. Thank you very much, David. Dohang Michael Kitchen's piece, Untitled, was written on a 1954 Olivetti Letter of 22. This is a wonder, wonderful vignette. This aged bowler who grew up in an age of prejudice that was permitted to be outwardly voiced as in mocking and joking. And he's admonished to knock off the anti-gay behavior by a younger member of his bowling team. And I like when you says, he simmered. It all seemed so arbitrary. No one seemed to care what he thought. I, you know, that's really so insightful and thoughtful that prejudice is often an artifact of one's generation. And people feel perhaps uh, personally slighted for not being able to share their perspective, even though they misunderstand and don't understand the, the uh, insensitivity of it, but it was so well done. And 
I could, that was just such an emotional piece. A, really a great vignette. Thank you, Michael. Diane Mayer's uh, piece was titled The Woman from Deaver Lane, and it was written on a Smith Premier number four. What a classic old typewriter. And that typewriter, I think, plays a part in this story. So this story is one of those cycle of life stories from mother to daughter who grows up herself having granddaughters. And in the time frame spans that of an entire century. And it so much reminds me of my grandfather, born in 1893, died in 1976. He saw the Wright brothers and he saw Man on the Moon. Uh, what change? And this is represented in your story as well, I think. I like the idea that uh, the, the lady, the mother, started her life in an era where it was quiet times, uh, where you say, quote, she missed the quiet times of her childhood later in life as as life became noisier and noisier i really like the soundscape uh that's my term not yours but the sense of soundscape that's in your uh piece so much writing is often uh, cinematic and visual in the symbolism but your piece is audible audible it's it has this soundscape in, impact to it is really unique very well done I like the technology spectrum that's represented in this story, the, the arc from the rural pre-electrified farm life, you know, quiet, idyllic, close to nature, to the age of radio and then the age of television. And finally, her end of days, the mother's and the, the daughter's end of days, that is, in a nursing home. And I think that this whole spread of technology is mirrored in your choice of typewriter, the Smith Premier Number no. Four, which indirectly or on, as an aside, you know, there is a certain noise aspect to any typewriter, and I, that's another underlying theme in here, right? <laughs> very, very interesting. So, the lesson I think for this that I get out of it is don't forget about the aged people, oh, the things they've seen. And as I thought about that phrase that came to my mind, then I started thinking totally different subject. I started thinking about the android character Roy Batty from the film Blade Runner and his Tears in Rain speech, how, oh, the things he's seen. And so, yeah, don't forget the aged and uh, their stories. And I really love this arc of a whole century that took place in your story, a one-pager that has so much content in it. That was really so good. So Darren Sundstrom's untitled piece was uh, written on a facet TP1. And this is a really cute story of Darren's brother and his brother's friend who tried to make a raft from an old logs that they pulled uh, out of a Canadian river, only to find that these logs were so waterlogged that they could barely float. And they would actually float just under the surface. But that gives Darren's brother the idea, this humorous ending to the story, that he could buoy himself up by walking on one of these logs and be seen by people along the shore downstream as seemingly walking on water. What a great, funny story that was. I really loved it, Darren. Thanks for sharing that. David Randall's piece was titled Bill's Incident, and it was written on a Groma Calibri. So Bill is a security guard for the building. And it's a really funny story of what he calls the incident. And the incident is from earlier in uh, Bill's uh, career, early in his career as a security guard, when Bill ends up foiling the attempted kidnapping of a business executive. And in the aftermath of that kidnapping, he is rewarded with his boss's job. And then he becomes the person who screens the new security candidates and ensures that no kidnappers are hired by mistake. That was such a fun story. That, that was a real exciting. You know, this, this could be a film. This could be a movie, I think. It's like a treatment for a potential movie. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Max, I really loved your story, The Hypothetical Life of a Stranger. Max's piece are observations of a person he calls Mr. Man, and it's poignant and touching. And I like what he says, because I just see one side of him, only the external. And you know, that is so true for every one of us. When we see these strangers, we can only see them externally and what we 
know of them is only what we see them doing. You, you display some great observational skills in this piece, and I loved the physicality also of the presentation of your typed piece. I loved the parchment paper, I loved the red ink, I loved the cute little stamp in the upper right corner, I liked the uh, chop uh, in the lower left corner, and I like also the synopsis of your entire writing process from Alpha Smart Neo to Facet uh, TP1 typewriter and even the pedigree of the scanner, the Epson V700. I thought that was really cool. I mean, it, it's like uh, every part of the typecasting process is, is documented there. And the presentation, that red ink on on parchment is so good. You really had uh, made this as a work of art, but your story is really a great. I love this Mr. Man and the observations you made of him. Really, way to go, Max. Well done. Okay, Diane Cox, I liked your piece called One Man's Trash. Now, how great of a piece is this? And oh, by the way, it was written on a mint green Hermes 3000, not just a Hermes 3000, a mint green, the classic color. Okay, how much better can a piece be that has in one page it has Joseph Cornell yes it's on my nightstand Joseph Cornell it has Philip K Dick it has William Gibson count zero that's in my stack of books right over there it has Marcel Ducamp it has motor scooters it has typewriters what a great story it has everything including Dumpster diving, yes, dumpster diving. What a great collision of artists and writers in your little story. And I really love how the stranger, the dumpster diving stranger that apparently your story is uh, based on becomes such a unique artist. I love Joseph Cornell. I like his work, the whole concept of it. And of course, you know, I like William Gibson and all that and Blade Runner, et cetera, et cetera. So really great, I loved your piece. Okay, finally, there was a piece I wrote called They Call Her Cherokee. This was written on this guy here, the Underwood, 1930s Underwood, little rusted out, scrappy little dude. So this is a real life homeless lady that we see around the UNM and uh, Knob Hill parts of Albuquerque. People call her Cherokee. She's usually uh, swaddled in a off-white uh, blanket. And this was just... I had heard through different people that she was once probably well-educated, middle-class person, but something happened in her life, something snapped. And I wrote about what that could have been, which was I imagined it as an educational system, a higher educational system that jilted her. So that was my little contribution to the project. I really enjoyed these, these pieces, and I... I really thought they were all well thought out and took a lot of effort and I really uh, am proud to have been part of this of this work that you guys did. Thank you very much. So I'm going to try to get out the assignment for typing assignment 10 in the next couple days. This time I believe I'm going to give it a little more than two weeks, a little more time for you guys to work on it. I know there was a few people who were very busy this time of year and couldn't participate. I also know it's a real challenge for some of you to try to do this in your busy lives, and uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more time this time. So until the next time, in a couple days, you'll have typing assignment number 10. Again, you guys did so great. Well done, and I'm honored to be part of your writing effort. And so until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.